Hey everyone, welcome to the late night restaurant show. You know what? Dominic's not here today, and we miss Dominic big time. He is he's in a knitting conference in Cincinnati. He's a big knitter. He likes knitting socks. He's a big sock knitter. And he's also the food safety guy for Canada. You know, everyone knows Dominic. Um, but he's also in Cincinnati today knitting socks at the competition to see who has the best knock sock. I got to say this right. Sock knitting capabilities. So that's where Dominic is today. He's going to miss out on our amazing guest that we have here. Um, you know what? She's she's also a podcaster and and you know what? She's a rock star. So we're going to introduce you to our guest here in a second. But first, here's our show. And you know what? Enjoy. Enjoy. Enjoy this pod. Well, I don't say podcast. I almost said podcast, but we all know it's not a podcast. If you don't know, it's not a podcast. You should check out our new swag store called Swag Sucks. You can go and grab an auto podcast show there or t-shirt there, hat there, dog bowl, pillows, <laughs> you name it. We also just have new Adidas and Under Armour shirts there that say not a podcast now. So you can actually get some cool swag, swag, I think it's called, well, we call it swag sucks, but you can get some cool stuff there. That's not just generic, you know, the Fruit of Loom stuff, not that there's anything wrong with Fruit of Loom, but it's not the stuff that shrinks when you get swag usually go and you wash it the next day and it shrinks five sizes too small this is adidas under armor stuff awesome it says not a podcast on there swag sucks so check out our show store and our show and then let's wish dominic all the luck at his knitting sock conference symposium contest in cincinnati anyways we'll be right back after this Kenzie. <laughs> hey, how are you? Do you think Dominic's going to kill me for that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that got me. <laughs> Do you think Dominic's at the first ever annual or first ever, first ever an annual sock knitting contest in Cincinnati? You know what? I wouldn't doubt it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we launched we launched our swag sucks store um and we were giving away pillows and i told him that it came out of his budget <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> he's like what i said i said it's on linkedin it says we we told you on linkedin he goes yeah <laughs> like, it's <great>. yeah <laughs> yeah we love him to death so we have to wish him luck at his sock knitting contest he better come out with that's all I'm you know what he can knit a good sock well that's a good skill to have so <laughs> he's also the food safety guy so he's, he's awesome anyways let's talk about you today so kenzie osborne i you know i was thinking about your last name today and i went to school with a, a gentleman called jeremy osborne and i haven't thought of his name until i saw your name and getting ready for today's show but you know what <laughs> it's a good last name by the way Thank you. Good last I feel name. like it's a good last name. I like it. Like a, it's definitely a, when you say it's a rock star last name. It you actually know what? Is. Actually, <laughs> I have a funny story though. So I got what a dog. Do? I so I got a dog in COVID, and um, I didn't know dogs have last names. Like I didn't know that was a thing. So really? it, yeah. So it, when you like register them, they actually have a last name. But I didn't know that. So I named him Ozzy because it was my brother's nickname. Um, no. So his legal name is Ozzy Osbourne. 
<laughs> so every time I take him to the vet, sure like, is no. This is for Ozzy Osbourne, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I didn't that know. That is priceless. That is awesome. Well done. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about you <laughs> more than that. I love that. <laughs> All right. What do you do? Let's just give us everything. Throw it up. Here yeah. Um, what do I do? I do. I mean, I do a lot, but the bottom line is I love helping people to just be happier and be healthier with food. Um, my story sort of all started, which is it, it's been quite a journey, but I, growing up, had a, uh, a pretty severe eating disorder. And through that, um, a big part of my recovery was actually learning how to cook and being in kitchens and being with real food. Um, so much so that I actually wound up going to culinary school and learning how to prepare delicious food that is also nutrient dense. And I just love helping people to be able to bring that into their home. Um, so I do that and, uh, I talk to chefs from around the world about how much they love food too, because there's a lot to talk about there. I have so many questions for you today. <laughs> so, okay. and you have a podcast too, so you have to tell people about that. Yes. Yeah. And that's where I talk to the, the chefs. Um, what's yeah. it called? What's your podcast called? It's called behind the plate. Cause we talk about everything, mm -hmm. the love, the flavors, the stories behind the plate. Oh my gosh. It's so fun. I'm, I am, if I'm allowed to say this, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> like I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I hate to tell you, I am a little as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But we don't, our, we don't do a podcast. So I don't know what you're talking about. I, I've never done a podcast. We don't do a podcast. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's awesome. I have so many questions to you regarding food and, and nutrition yeah. and healthy. Is it called healthy eating today? Like, are we, are we using that terminology or is that gone or what's now? What's I mean, the I think there's so many words to, to use. I just think, I always think of nourishment. Like you just want to feel okay. good food. Um, and I don't even, I don't think that just means nourishment for your body. I think it also means mm. nourishment for your soul. Like Food can be something that is so tied to memories and how we feel and experiences that Ooh, I think healthy yeah. eating really needs to be something that encompasses foods that you love and also foods that love you back and make you feel really good. I have to tell you a story. I know this shows all about you, but I got to tell you a story about I that. You made me think of something here. So I did a talk way, I think it was probably 2000. 18 or 17 like that for uh, a senior home like a senior conference yeah and and for um you know retirement residents and i and at the time did you see have you seen the pod or, uh, they were using like um apple pods i think they were called or whatever music and they were putting seniors with dementia and stuff and putting music into their ears and they would turn back into like normal people it was incredible oh, right do you remember that I, I just, uh, oh, you got to check Google it. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay. So they put, so why I say this, I'll get to my point here. It's a long <laughs> journey here. Hold tight. Let's drop in. Here we go. So what, why I say that is that they turn like they, they're Alzheimer's and everything else. They kind of disappeared and they turned back into these people and they would start dancing and stuff or singing to this music as if they were normal. The music was bringing back that memory. Yeah. So I said, Okay, that's a sense. I think it's a sense, right? Like it, it's yeah. using um, audio to to bring back memory. I said, I think we can do it with food, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because when you when you there's so much memory as you point out uh, in relationship to food. Yeah. So I did this talk, and I actually filled the room full of home like hot cookies, like right out of the oven. And we have this huge table in the middle, and we made this huge pile of chocolate chip hot cookies. And when the people walked in for my lecture about this relationship to food and how food can create memories and how do we use that for seniors and, and other homes to also encourage them to eat better or eat more or bring back the memories of your mom. And the goal is for them to, when they walked in, is to bring their memory back to when their mom made cookies, right? Oh my God. So, so when people were walking into the room, they're like, Oh, this smells like my mom and this and that used to do this. And I'm like, yeah, yes. <laughs> that was the, what we had to do. 
but I, I think it's, I, th- I really believe it. I really believe it those are the things that we kind of forget. And, and we, you know, we, we remember the bad ones. We remember the good ones. Remember everything in that. And I think the more that we can do that and keep the brain, I guess, you know, not dealing with those kind of those, those, you know, those cruel situations that happens to these people young or old now, cause they're getting younger. Um, is that we use food to bring back memory and maybe it helps. I, I don't know, but it was a great experiment. Well, it makes sense because like food is one of the only things that really involves all senses. Um, Cause it's like the sight of the food when it's that bright color or really pretty. Or I remember my grandpa, he would make this, uh, he called it the mountain Moore meringue because his last name was Moore. And it was just this meringue pie that was like higher than the height of like, Mm -hmm. um, but like you see this, there's the sight, there's the smell, there's the taste. There's even, they've seen, um, uh, like the crunch of a chip, like even that can (laughs) initiate certain memories and just feel so good. So it's just such a sensory experience when you have a meal that it makes sense though to bring up memories so quickly. You know, I think that's the thing is I no because okay, we're gonna have a cool journey. This is gonna be a great show, by the way. Because I, I have a question, but well, I just want to say this because when does the when does when do we start eating bad in our lives? Like when do we start to go down that and not saying that we always do it that way, but a lot of people are and you know, we can look at the statistics and everything else. Obviously, everyone's yeah. kind of going that way, but um when does that trigger? When do we see that switch over and, 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 and people start to navigate that way? Is, is it financial? Is it, is it, a, is it emotional? Like when do we start to see that switch over? You know what? I think it actually starts really young. Um, really? I do. Um, so, I mean, food marketing is so tailored to uh, yeah. children, right? Um, and it's like all these big colors, it's right at their eye level and the processed foods, um, there's something that we call the bliss, a bliss point. And it's a combination of fat, um, salt and sugar that makes a food like so tasty. Called it a bliss point? It's called the bliss point. Yeah. And it's actually a a thing. I'm writing notes. (laughs) Take it. (laughs) Um, and that makes a food so tasty so that we want to keep eating more of it. Almost think of it like when you have a chip, it's hard to just have one. You're just gonna want to keep wanting more. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So and is that the bliss point when you eat yeah, more? Like it's called this bliss point that you just keep wanting more of it and you almost don't, like the flavor doesn't get overwhelming in your mouth. And so you just no, you, it, want it, more. It can, well, well, it's so good. This is like I said, this is really good. Cause why well, well, I get excited about it because I'm always trying to eat healthy and everything else. Mm. My kids are on me every second of the day. And trust me, I used to work in a gym and I used to work out and everything else. And then it was honestly my first, <laughs> my first daughter, which I love her to death, but then it just kind of things slipped. And, yeah. and now we're getting, now I got to go back to the gym. I got me going to the gym. I got to go to the doctor more often. I mean, it's cause I'm getting old, all these things, but which I, I don't mind because I lived it, you know, up into my probably 27, I think it was when it, um, but one of the things I always notice is after so many chips, let's say potato chips, you don't even know you're eating. Like it, no. it's just like, it's just, yeah. like when you stop, how do you stop the blitz point? Can you, can you no. derail that no. or what? So the thing is, is with those processed foods, right? They're stripped of a lot of nutrients. Yeah. And so you're feeding your body, but it's not what your body needs. So you don't get full as quickly. Um, And so what I like to recommend is just adding something to that. So if you have a bit of chips, fine, but maybe have that with, if you like tzatziki, and then maybe some, if you like cucumbers or red peppers or baby carrots or snap peas, um, something like that. Ooh, there's my pup. There's Ozzy. Um, so, but you do know you have to get a, his wife's name. Dog. You have to get another dog. You have to get a Sharon. You have cool. to get a Sharon. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you totally gotta um, get a Sharon. Get like one of those little. Get like a little yappy one. Oh my god! <laughs> like a Chihuahua. Well, yeah, I was gonna say Chihuahua. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that would be golden. Um, that would be great. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so with the Bliss Point, you, you'll want, with any sort of processed food, you want to sort of pair it with something that is actually going to provide your body with nourishment so mm -hmm. that your body's getting the vitamins, the minerals, the fat, protein, carbs that it actually needs. So you'll feel full a little bit longer. Um, and you can kind of mix it with some of those other foods that you like. But, does does is it neurologic? Um, that's sort of up for debate. Um, oh, so it depends well. because especially <laughs> well, sugar, give, you tell me what you think. Huge, there's a huge debate when it comes to sugar as to whether it actually does have addictive properties or whether it doesn't. Now um, I've heard that on the radio that it doesn't, and it, then every parent in, goes, "It does." <laughs> it's definitely in debate. Um, and, and I mean, I think it's hard to, to tell because is it something that we're just so used to and that's so palatable and tasty, mm -hmm. or is it actually causing some sort of, um, cha like neurological change in our, our brain? Um, and I, there's not really conclusive evidence, so it's interesting, but we do know that sugar, um, and processed sugars will very likely increase cravings and increase hunger. And so mm. if it does that and you're hungry and you're having more cravings, you're probably going to eat more sugar. And then we just get into this spiral of eating more and eating more and eating more. Um, and so that's where pairing it with something else can be so useful. Like if you have a cookie, have it with a side of, I don't know, if you like Greek yogurt and fresh fruit or, you know, something like that to, to balance it out a little more. Now, Simon Sinek recently had, I forget the lady he had on his show recently <laughs> talking about eating f foods in different, like eating vegetables first and then you eat your meat. Is that, is that really true? Is that, no, I'm going to say true because Simon's going to be like, no, it is. No, but like, <laughs> is that really a thing? Like, is, is, is that more and more where eat, it, it, it's the sequence of what, how you eat your food will also help the way it's digested or how your body uses the nutrients? So that's, it's, it's funny, right? Because nutrition is all relative and that's not usually the first thing I would go to if I'm helping somebody <laughs> eat healthy. Like that's not generally speaking uh -huh. what I would look at first. Um, and the main mechanism by which that works is just imagine you eat, uh, I don't know, a burger fries and then you try and have your vegetables. Mm -hmm. The likelihood is the vegetables are going to be the one that gets left behind if anything gets left behind. But if you eat the vegetables first, then you're more likely to fill up on those vegetables, get those vitamins, get the minerals, get the fiber. And then you might just wind up eating a little bit less of the burger, a little bit less of the fries or, you know, a more moderate portion size of those other foods. So I think it's more of a mechanism of at least now you're getting the vegetables in instead of sort of <laughs> like a, an afterthought. Yeah, I yeah, I totally get it. <laughs> so I have another I have so many questions. Like so I have another question here on this because Yeah, go for it. I, I, now are yeah. we able to fix are we able to fix where we're going? Like we're like the numbers are going up. We're not seeing people, you know, get healthier, it feels. Mm -hmm. Are we getting healthier or are we going are we still on the road of the derailment that we see happening right now? Well, I think the big change is two big changes. So one in the food processing industry, like now when you go to the store, um, about 60% of the foods there are ultra processed. Um, 60%. Again, so, <laughs> which, is, which is wild. Is um, and again, ultra processed. So ultra processed means, so like a processed food could be like canned beans or dried, like a beef jerky or like a dried fruit. Cause it is processed, but it's not like, it's still mostly natural ingredients. Ultra okay. processed are like, you've got a lot of additives. You've got lots of say sugars, or artificial sugars or preserve. Yeah. Preservatives, things like that. Um, that would be like, your frozen dinners or your chips or your cookie, like things like that would be the ultra processed. Um, and wow. I don't want to come out of this saying that processed foods are bad because processed foods can still be a part of a diet. That's fine. But we're getting so far into that processed food 
um, part that we're not eating enough of the whole foods. And quite frankly, I think a lot of people, especially people my age, don't know how to cook with them. Like you give them an egg and they don't know what to do with it. Or, you know, you like (laughs) some like, and, and this is, I am not blaming the people. I think I'm just, it's the way that our society is going. Um, some won't even know how to cook rice. Right. And so that, you know, not having those basic skills, well, why would you go to the grocery store and buy all these whole foods when you don't know what to do with them or how to make them taste good? You're just going to go and get the frozen dinner. Um, And so I think that's a huge issue right now is in part the culinary knowledge and not like making extravagant meals, just a basic meal. Just basic eggs. That like tastes good and uses whole, (laughs) mostly whole food. You know, are we gonna are we are we though are we gonna get better? Like, are we getting get healthier one day, or is it like when, when like this got to be like? Is it the cost? Is it like are we getting lazier? Like, are we getting like less educated? Like, my kids know more about nutrition than I ever even think of. You know, and, I, I don't think it's the knowledge of nutrition. I think a lot of people know the yeah. broad basics of nutrition. Is it the stress? Now, more, I think we're more stressed. I think it's it can be time, it can be energy. Okay. Like we're such a go 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 society that you come home at mm-hmm. five thirty p.m. and you don't want to cook dinner. And if you don't know how to cook like an easy dinner, then that's a big feat. Who was I talking? I was talking to this with um, I was talking about this with Mark Murphy, mm-hmm. um, and he was saying, you know, some people, so, some people that he knows, it might take them twenty minutes to chop an onion. Well, if it takes you 20 minutes to chop an onion, then to make a meal is going to take you an hour and a half for just a basic meal. And if you're already getting home from work at 530 and then doing that, it's a lot. So I think it's time. I think it's culinary knowledge. I think it um, is perception of cost. Mm -hmm. And by that, what I mean is processed food seems a lot cheaper, but whole foods can be just as as cheap it's just the thing is is the starting bill is going to be more expensive right? yeah well, well tira i'm going to share something with you <laughs> Kenzie, is that i don't think okay i have this theory and because i work in the restaurant industry a lot yeah and that's my that's my that's my area but here's the thing and we look at this from chefs okay and restaurateurs mm-hmm. who taught us how to buy groceries <laughs> That's also really? like a very valid point because I don't right, but like no no one no one no one like no one usually it's our parents. Yeah. Well really our parents and then who taught them? Yeah. And then who taught them? Like who like there isn't a class, and there should be a class on how to buy groceries. Yeah. And like it's <laughs> this is way off. So there was a I remember listening to this show like many years ago, like probably 10, 20 years ago. And there was after the Columbine shooting in the United States. And there's a guy that came on there and they're doing a talk show. Like, what should we do about the gun problems that we have? And the guy said, stop selling bullets. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. Stop selling the bullets. You can sell guns, but it's the bullets that are killing. It's not the gun. And I was like, he's got a point. <laughs> you know, like stop selling bullets. <laughs> That's the key. Yeah. Right. So I'm thinking about the same thing when we look at um what we have in this space as well, right? Like how how do we how do we stop, you know, how can we educate more people on on these things, but stop necessarily giving them the the um ability not to like we need to teach them more on how to how to buy groceries because we we haven't given them the right i guess uh, ability to make the right decisions on when they buy groceries how they buy groceries or what there is and that goes all the way down into the into the chef's world like the chefs like in there's some schools that may show you how to order but no one really understands the right way to do that right like i think we need to nip it there yeah i mean i think that's definitely a big piece of it I also think sort of along the same lines, um, I get a lot of questions of how to read uh, like a nutrition facts label or how to read a ingredient label, right? But with that, the UK is like worlds ahead here. Um, They have so many substances or chemicals or preservatives that are banned that are still Mm. 
one of the most common things that we use here. And they're banned for known relationship with health issues. And so um, wow. what's actually kind of funny to do is if you look up a product, um, some sort of cereal or even some mm -hmm. of like fast food restaurant ingredients in their meals, if you look at it in Canada or the States, and then you look at the same ingredients in the UK, they're going to be different. Really? Um, lot of the time. Yeah. So wow. it's, um, it's so interesting to see that because we know that there are health concerns, but just in North America, we're not really doing as much about it as mm -hmm. the UK is, um, and Europe in general. So, yeah. Is that like, I, I hope we get better because it'd be kind of nice, but I think I when you look at the restaurant industry, I think more and more chefs are becoming very aware of how they're cooking and what they're cooking with more than anything, I think, nowadays. And I think it's moving like like you, you think about like 10 years ago, everything was about local. And, and I agree with that uh, as well. And I think when you look at it shifting over to sustainability, I was in Chicago a month ago. I didn't hear a lot of sustainability talk. Are we going to see more and more over this clean deck kind of model for restaurants? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it would be great if we do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just, to be, so you're the, the expert on this side, because I don't know um, when it comes to food products that are labeled as uh I don't know, you could label it as healthy, you could label it as organic, you could label it as this or that. And the price of that product increases a lot um, just because they can mark up the prices when that happens. So I don't know mm -hmm. what it would be like from a restaurant perspective, if that would also drive costs up um, as we go towards that. Well, but I think more and more people will, will pay for it. Like that's true too. Right. Yeah. Like I think right, you see that today. I like, like, and here's the two things. And I think the more that we educate people on that, let's back to that education thing. Mm -hmm. and I think, and here's the, here's, okay. We're going to get into, sorry. I'm all over the ADHD today. So I have to, I say this because I think what happens is we complicate the education process of telling people about nutrition or how to eat and everything else. Even the bloody labels on the back of stuff is so bloody confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use big words that no one knows what the hell they are. So I think we need to bridge the gap within, well, first we'll start with education. We need to make it easier and simpler yeah. and funner and not so generic. Like, And then don't go too far over where now it's too playful in a sense. But we need to do that. And we need to do little bits at a time we need to chunk it out as they say it. We need little, we need to drip it constantly into our society of these little things more and more. Yeah. I think we need that. And then I think also we need to, we need to make those labels. We need to make those labels. So we understand them and we need to make them true. I love some products where it's like eat the bag of chips and this is how much calorie is not 400 and some grams oh or 40 grams. Like it's like, just tell yeah. us what the hell it is. Cause I'm going to gnaw this bag back. The serving just... sizes are funny because mm. like for chips, a lot of times it's like 10, yeah, 20 chips. chips. And you're like, I eat that when I'm debating whether to eat chips or not. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's just warming up. <laughs> um, but no, you're, you're so right. And again, that it goes a lot back to the food product marketing. Um, yeah. You know, they, if you put certain things on it, um, a big one is the kids breakfast cereals. You'll see a lot that are, it'll say um, a source of eight yeah. vitamins and minerals. And you're like, yes. And also a bunch of preservative or not preservative, sorry, like sugars and added chemicals and additives. Um, <laughs> and a wow. source of sort of just means about 5% or a little bit higher of your daily value. So that's not a ton of those vitamins and minerals. I mean, you could eat a couple vegetables and get way more than that. Um, wow. But it, it makes it so confusing because you look at the box and you're like, oh my gosh, this is a source of 18 vitamins and minerals. This must be so good for me. Um, and uh, yeah, so they just, they know how to, how to market that kind of thing. I think, well, I think we need to call it out because I love marketing to death 
and it's my forte. Um, but but I do I do think it's an area where we need to be more truthful within that because I think also as marketers, you, you have a responsibility. I think also to do what's right and. Mm-hmm. Sooner or later, well, and there's a big call out nowadays. I think more and more people are calling out those things, those situations more and more yeah. because of social media, right? Like social media is really fueling that. And yeah. I think we need more and more of that. We need more people like you as well, be able to educate us and share more of the knowledge of what we're doing out there. We really do. We yeah. really do. Like we do. And this is the thing is I always say everyone needs a coach. Everyone needs a nutritional coach as well. You know what? I really do. It's true. And I always get a question about like nutrition coach versus dietitian. And what is that? And it's so confusing. Now, how, how do you want to be, per, how, how, what's the, what do we call you? Like, what are, where, where do you fall yeah. in? Are you both? Um, or are you so one day this, I, one day that? I am, uh, so I am a nutrition coach. I'm a natural nutrition clinical practitioner, which is a really long name. It's a certification uh, within Canada that you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, the big thing that I say to people is what I do is I help because of my culinary background, I really help you eat more whole foods in a way that makes sense for you. And that is easy in your lifestyle. And that feels like you can really enjoy your foods. Um, and that protects your your health, right? But what a dietitian would do, or if somebody would go and see a dietitian, it might be if they already have something like maybe they have kidney disease or maybe oh, they okay. have, like uh, a damaged liver and they need like a very specific, that's like a prescriptive medical plan when it mm. comes to food. So I don't do that side. I'm more helping people um, just eat healthier and be happier and do it in a way that's easy and free and exciting. Um, and that's uh, that's what I love doing. Because yeah. you can tell somebody that, oh my gosh, if you just change this little thing, you could feel so much better. Their mind is just blown. Okay. You know, I'm going to ask you, <laughs> what is some of those things that you find people, that's that one thing over that one. We, we, we've been saying lately, it's that one degree more. Cause if you take regular boiling water, you move a one degree, great steam. Yeah. What's the one degree more that, that you tend to tell people and they're like, no way. So, Okay, so there are there's three things, and that's a hard question to ask because okay. generally speaking, I would want to know what they're like. Breakfast. Yeah, yeah, come on. I'll give it. you. I'll give I you that. Give, give, me, give me the generic. <laughs> um, but uh, no, so the three are protein, protein, fiber, and fats. That w- if one of those is missing or not great, when you in every eat, meal, in every meal, you want protein, fats, and fiber. Um, and so say you're having like a morning bowl of cereal. This was this was one of the clients that we just made something so awesome for, for her. Um, so she was having a regular bowl of cereal. Um, the first thing we did was we swapped out the milk for yep. Greek yogurt mixed with a little bit of honey. So it was more like a parfait almost at that point. Okay. Um, but immediately increasing the protein allowed her to feel more satiated, less hungry. Um, really? It's nice and creamy. And then we just, so she did that for a little bit. And then we added fruit to it, which added antioxidants. It added fiber. Um, and she she chose whatever fruits she wanted. And then we added nuts and seeds, whatever nuts and okay. seeds she wanted or peanut butter or almond butter, whatever you like. That adds healthy fats, which helps the absorptions of certain vitamins and is also really linked to satiety. So we just did that like one little step at a time. She was thinking she would have to start making like omelets or avocado yeah. toast. Or, you know, these extravagant things. All we had to do was just swap the milk for a bit of Greek yogurt. You also could just blend protein powder into the milk if yep. you wanted the milk still. And that would increase protein. And then add a bit of fats and fiber and bang, bang, bang. You're done. She still has a bit of the cereal on top because she likes that flavor. That's fine. But now we've added a bunch of other stuff and uh, feeling so much better. So it doesn't have to be complicated. I was going to say, well, I get two compli- – well, I have the complicated questions. They're simple questions because it's me. So one – is it true that I see this a lot? I'm going to ask you some probably social media things because I see it all the time. <laughs> is is it true that increasing the fat in some meals, like if you're going to have this, take out the take out the bread, but increase the fat? Like let's say, like an example, horrible. I'm sorry, I'm going to say these these this fast food stuff, but you take the baconator and you can have the baconator, but you don't eat the bun, but you can have the burger 
patties and the bacon and 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 the cheese and the mushrooms. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Can you eat that? But if you have the bun, it's going to be bad. Like, is this combination of including the breads now is throwing things off? Because I see people ordering non-bread burgers all the time now. Yeah. Is it true? Um. So. So again, it's sort of this concept of good, better, best. Um, you still <laughs> want carbohydrates. So but you still want the carbs. You still you want the carbs. But it's the type of carbohydrates. So oh, you want ones that are higher okay. in fiber. So the like the buns that you get on a burger on fast food are very refined carbohydrates okay. um, that aren't very nutrient dense. But if you had something like even a whole grain piece of sourdough or like a fresh bakery bread or if you had beans or rice or you know something else that was more of a whole whole grain or a higher carb that's helpful and then so what happened you know 20 years back was everyone got so afraid of fats that we took Mm -hmm. fat out and it was low fat everything as you know when you take fat out you take flavor out and when you take flavor mm. out, you need to add that back. Mm. And the food industry decided to add that back with a lot of sugar. Um, and that it has been harmful. So oftentimes people are afraid to add fats to their meal, but that is oh. what makes a meal taste good. It's what makes a meal satiating. You probably want more of the plant-based fats, like more of those unsaturated fats. Um but uh, yeah, you want like a good balance. So I always say if there's, imagine a plate, you want about half of the plate to be vegetables, maybe some fruits. You want quarter of the plate to be that high fiber carbohydrate. So that could be a piece of toast, uh, like mm-hmm. grain. it could be brown rice, quinoa, beans, sweet potato, whatever. And then a quarter plate, you would want to be your protein source. Right. So and then embedded in that, you would cook in some healthy fat or you might add some avocado to your salad or you might yeah. add some nuts or seeds somewhere. But that's what's going to be balancing. So it's not just about like, oh, I'm going to toss out the bread and load up on bacon, cheese and burgers. <laughs> um, maybe not the best idea. Everyone was thinking it. <laughs> the concept <laughs> of choosing more whole grains yeah. or whole uh, carbohydrates with protein and lots of vegetables that's awesome all right so i have one more question and first of all i love this this is i can sit down we get like two hours later um okay i have a question for you because it's all over like it is everywhere give us the lowdown on this whole fasting thing oh my god Jeez. I'm like, ah, again. Is this is this another one of these things that you have to go out there and fix the world because we we get on this and please so, tell me tell me we can eat. So again, it's absolutely not the first thing I would ever look to. So oh, really? fasting, um, there might be some metabolic benefits of fasting, but the the reality is, if you go from eating say from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and then you just eat the exact same thing from mm-hmm. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m like you're eating the same thing. So it's it's not going to change the nutrients that you're bringing into your body. Mm-hmm. How it does help some people is I could say, hey, Jay, you can't have any ice cream or cookies. Okay, so I could say that to you. Yeah. Right? That may not feel so good. <laughs> um, if I just said, Jay, you're just not going to eat after 6pm, which is when you normally have your cookies and ice cream at yeah. like 9pm on the couch then now you're just not eating those foods, right? Mm. Um, Or you're eating them a lot less. And that in turn may help with whatever your goal is, healthier, weight loss, et cetera. Um, But again, that's usually not the first thing I would go to because you can be really healthy and eat at 8 a.m., 8 p.m., et cetera. Um, It's just like, what are you eating? And if you're prone Mm. to eating a lot or snacking a lot at night and then you just stop doing that because of intermittent fasting well it's not because the intermittent fasting was something so special it was because you stopped eating all those chips or cookies or those whatever extra calories right right um so again it's not the first thing i would go to and there is some research that shows metabolic benefits but i would say what you eat is a lot more important than what time you eat at so you sure get cranky I'll tell you that. Such a, such a well, you um, get so you must get asked that question a lot because it is everywhere. Everyone's everywhere. got this. 
it's everywhere. And it's I, everywhere. I, I'm not, yeah. And for some people, like for, for very, for specific, um, again, it, it can help with some metabolic conditions, but like I say, that would be if somebody say somebody, you know, is already eating a, an extremely healthy diet, they're already exercising really well and they're just stuck. That might be something yeah. that we try, right. Um, as like a final step. But if someone's coming to me and they're not quite at that point where they're eating a balanced diet or mm -hmm. they're not quite at that point where they're exercising regularly, we would go to that far before I would go to. <laughs> this is awesome. Anyway, uh, well, if, so how do people reach out to you? And I know Dominic's going to be like, yeah, 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 let me do this. So how do people reach out to you? Because <laughs> I always say just Google, just Google people. Yeah. Do people, can people find you? Like, do do people come? Like, how do we? How do you help people? Like, how do you? How do yeah. we get a hold of you? Absolutely. Um. So on Instagram, uh, my handle is just Coach Kenzie Osborne, and I'm always oh, open gosh. for DMs or to see uh, some of the content that I mm -hmm. I post. Um, and to see the chef interviews too, because those go up, uh, little clips of them go up on Instagram too. Um, and then my website is super simple. It's just KenzieOsborne.com. And that's where you can find, nice. um, some blog articles. I do some events. Uh, I have an awesome community that I love, like there's <laughs> incredible people in there. And we just share healthy recipes, hacks, and like, really? Our goals, the ways in which we're, you know, eating healthier, it's so, it's such a blast. There's uh, some really awesome people in there. Um, so I have that community and then I do coaching as well. If people are really looking to take a hand, you know, take a grasp on their, their nutrition. Uh, that's awesome. Well, Kenzie, thank you so much and for educating us a little bit, killing some of these myths. I know Dominic's so he's at his knitting event on socks um, and hopefully he's winning. But he, you know what, I just find it fascinating on your knowledge, but the way that you approach it is so calming. Like you really are an awesome coach on that. So thank you so much for spending the time with us today. And hopefully everyone can learn a little bit. But also just the fact that I think, I really think everyone needs, well, there's a lot of things I'm starting to say now. I think everyone needs a podcast. I think everyone needs a coach. <laughs> everyone needs a nutritional coach. Like I just think, this is, <laughs> sorry, people put a lot of work to you. Um, but I think it's important. I think it's important. We, we don't, I, here's the thing I think about coaching. And I'm learning this from coaching restaurants yeah. is that there's just so much for people to like either do or to research or to listen to, or to be guided today. There's just so much that's on our doorstep yeah. of understanding. And if we don't have people to help us unpack a lot of that stuff all the time, it's hard and it's and it's frustrating. And then yeah. you do the nine o'clock at night ice cream and chips and stuff. Yeah. So the yeah, stress, exactly. right? Well, I know. And I mean, coaching. Um, well, session nutrition. Nutrition is yeah. massive. I like find it, that so helpful insane. because. And of course, I'm a little bit biased, but it is so helpful because um, otherwise you're you're sort of just jumping into like a 30 day challenge or a meal plan, and and you know it works for a really short period of time, but you're not yeah. actually learning how you can make nutrition really easy in your lifestyle or address food relationship challenges that you have, mm -hmm. or just learn how to navigate events or parts of your life that are a very real thing. Um, and then you, you know, that accountability, that little buddy by your side, um, you do, you need the little buddy, everything and just customizing it hundred percent, you know, making sure that what you're doing is actually working for you and helping you feel better and helping you live better and making sense. Yeah. I was going to age myself and say the kazoo. You don't even know what that is, probably well, the yeah. little kazoo. <laughs> okay. So on the, on the, I think it was either the Jetsons or the, or the Flintstones. Okay, I little, know little, little little green guy, and, and the green guy would come up, and it was Mr. Kazoo, I think his name was. Oh. Anyways, the Kazoo, I haven't heard that in so long, but it was this little guy that always told him stuff to do, right? So I usually call that Dominic, but I'm gonna call him <laughs> little Kazoo now. Um, anyway, <laughs> he's gonna just eat me alive on this one. Yeah, it's um, in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in big trouble now, Mr. Kazoo. You know what? He might look like him too. No. Um, 
Anyways, Kenzie, thank you again. Everyone, please check out our website. Incredible. You are incredible. Thank you for being an amazing coach. Thank you for also giving us a little coaching today as well. And uh, everyone else, check out your website. It's, it's absolutely mind-blowing. But thank you for spending today with us. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate you having me. All right. We'll see you later. Bye.